All right, so we got a double chapter review here to go. But before I do that, I just quickly want to talk about the Magi anime. I just saw the first six episodes of season two. And yeah, they're skipping stuff, but I'm actually really enjoying it. And maybe here and there, depending on how good the episode is, if I catch up, I might throw out random episode reviews of Magi as well with the Kingdom of Magic for those that have been requesting it. I might do that. I don't know. If you guys want to see that, let me know because I'm actually quite interested in talking about it. I just really enjoy the shit out of the first six episodes of Magi Kingdom of Magic. They're doing a pretty damn good job capturing that emotion. So let's jump right into the chapters, people. the first chapter, it actually gave us quite a bit of interesting details. First of all, it gave us a little bit more into the relationship with Yunnan and Sinbad. Sinbad kind of desperately wanted to be into that conversation so so much that he went into a full equip and was attacking the bubble that Yunnan created where he kind of like I don't know if he was using life force energy or something life force, maybe the root to create that bubble or whatever because it wasn't even real wood or anything. It was like uh, taking on the appearance of something but Sinbad really is, when he wants something it must frustrate the shit out of him when he can't have it because he already at this particular point is that authoritative type of king feel and the thing about it is is that Yunnan said Sinbad scares him because Sinbad is very close to the ideal king vessel and part of me is wondering first of all the whole king's vessel thing it was kind of a little bit interesting and it's like okay what exactly is he talking about in regards to king's vessels and I'm thinking that Sinbad might remind him a bit too much of Solomon in a certain way because I think Yunnan already knows Solomon. I think he is aware of him or something or at least he has the memory, something there. And I'm thinking that that's why it scares him because he reminds him of him in a sense but maybe a twisted version of him because at the end of the day, Sinbad, with every chapter that goes by, he just more and more shows that he's a shady guy. Like he's listening, you know, in the previous chapter, he's listening to their conversation via birds and then he gets butt hurt when he can't hear what the hell they're saying. So while he's so epic as hell, chapters like this where Yunnan, one of the Magi, is scared of him in a way. That really goes to show. And I could possibly see, throwing out this prediction out there, I could see Sinbad possibly killing him at some given point and doing it in a way so that he can't be revived. Because we found out in this one that Magi, the reason why they keep on coming back is because their root when they die doesn't go, it doesn't go in the same way in the flow. It goes actually to the sacred palace. And we also find out that Ugo is the guardian of the sacred palace as well. And he just keeps on reviving them over and over. So if Aladdin does see Ugo, it'll possibly be in the distant future. It won't be anytime soon because he's in a place where Aladdin wouldn't be able to reach at the moment. He's in the sacred palace. Maybe the sacred palace doesn't even exist in this realm. Maybe it's in the other world and that's why possibly uh, Ugo pretty much said you'll never see me again because it's possibly in the other world. We might go to the other world at some given point if it even exists anymore or the space is there. So there's a lot of interesting things that can be said with that as well. Is it just me or did it feel like Yunnan was trying to be like 50 Cent? Yo dog, I died nine times. Well, he ain't get shot nine times, but he died nine times. So Yunnan over 50 Cent. I'm just saying. And this chapter also just really raises a lot of questions. Like, first of all, why is Ugo still guarding this palace? Was it Solomon that set him up and told him this is the plan that we have as of right now? This is where we're going with it? And why is it that he keeps on reviving Yunnan with the same body and the same consciousness? Is it because he feels as though he's a necessary key to kind of putting this world back in order? So there's a lot of interesting questions. And it's also like, Yunnan was the first one to actually pull out the dungeons and shit. So it's kind of like, Maybe it's all a part of this structure of the way the world is supposed to go. And somewhere along the lines, there's a flaw. And Solomon, like, kind of set things up so that he can possibly put it back in order. That's one of the things I'm thinking about. Overall, the chapter gave us a lot of interesting things. First of all, finding out a bit more about Ugo, where he's at, and exactly what is he doing. We don't know why he's doing it, but we got a little more insight into that as well. And also a bit more insight into the whole relationship between Yunnan and Sinbad. I really got to go back and read the adventures because it's still ongoing, of course, the Sinbad manga, because I want to learn more about them, and I want to see how they first encountered each other. And I'd imagine maybe they had a friendly relationship back then but from what we hear Sinbad is a changed person he's not the same person he was back when he was younger going on adventures and journeys I think Sinbad is just corrupted at this point I think absolute power corrupts absolutely and I think that's what it is with Sinbad I think at some given point he's gonna feel like he's gonna do whatever it takes to do what he feels is right and it's gonna keep on corrupting his very soul and he's already tainted so it's just a matter of time until we see that first glimpse of yeah Sinbad is turning into that evil dark side and again a lot of people are predicting that Sinbad might be the final villain and it'll suck because I love Sinbad and I know a lot of us love Sinbad but he's heading that direction and if you're not scared of him something is not right 
Very good chapter. It really gave us a lot of insight. It wasn't necessarily progressing the story. It kind of took a back burner from some things, but it was really just giving us more insight. So very good on that aspect. I would give this one an 8 out of 10. And we also got at the very end the arrival at Balbad with Alibaba. So again, a little bit of progression at the end as well. Again, very good. 8 out of 10. But let's move on to the next chapter. I called this one. I called it. I said, when they arrive at Balbad, it's going to be in a situation where Alibaba is going to realize he cannot leave this country the way it is. Now, this chapter, and in essence, the thing that comes to my mind is, is not necessarily what you do, but it's how you do it that determines everything. The co-empire is not what they did, because what the co-empire did is basically they're segregating, they're putting them down, no, you're this class, you're this class, but they masked it in this beauty. They changed ball it looks beautiful. They, they have people no longer being on the streets begging. So they made it appear as this beautiful thing, as masquerade, but what they're actually trying to do is basically say, yo, y'all just, uh, yeah, just another one of the flowers in our garden. You're going to respect us and you're going to be down on your basically, not knees necessarily, but you're going to follow suit. Like they have to wear, everyone has to wear the same clothing. It's basically stripping them of their identity. And that's pretty much what the co-empire does to play, you know, places like Balbad. It strips them of their identity. And Alibaba definitely recognizes that. And that's where it's going to be pushed that. I can see in the future, maybe once Alibaba beefs up and gets stronger and gets his kingdom, he's going to go to war and take Balbad back. He can't leave these people like this. And I, I'm just getting so excited because I really enjoyed. Like, I, I don't know, right now, I'm just like fanboying over Magi. I watched the anime and then I read these two chapters and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit tense right now and I'm a little intense with this whole situation but he needs to take back his kingdom and it was displayed in this one especially when he sees his people from the fog troop now the woman she is a simple person so she just sees it as yo as long as I can eat and I have a roof over my head I'm good but in actuality, a man that is looking at it and he's like, yo, they're stripping us of our pride. They're stripping us of who we are. Yeah, we get to eat and we get to live. But is that really all there is to life? Like, is, is, should I just be satisfied with being able to live? And that's where it really comes into moral questions. I guess in a sense, it's like somebody could argue you're being ungrateful. At least you get to eat and they ain't killing you. But then... What's the point of fucking living if you're not alive? Is it just me or does the manga cut love to fucking troll the shit out of Alibaba? Everywhere he goes, it's just everyone laughing at him. Ha ha, you ain't getting no pussy, motherfucker. It's like, leave the motherfucker alone. Now I'm starting to feel bad for him. Everywhere he goes, it's just people fucking teasing him for not getting no fucking ass. Like, goddamn. Then at the very end, it kind of got a little sentimental with him. Pretty much, he's going to head to Kashim's grave. What is he going to find there? I'd imagine it's just going to be like maybe a simple garden or something i don't know but that was kind of a little bit entering the emotional stuff i said what will be at kashim's grave i mean what's really going to be there they're not rich or anything so it's just going to be like probably flowers and maybe he might see the rook or something for the first time i don't know S something crazy could happen again he has this very strong connection with kashim and i believe kashim's rook is within alibaba at this point so it's going to be interesting to see the next chapter overall this chapter it wasn't the most amazing thing but it was taking a more i guess in-depth look into the situation and kind of opening alibaba's eyes that while you feel as though you did the best you could for your country, you can do better. And I think it's going to open his eyes to, yo, I need to become a lot more than what I am. And I need to come and take over Balbad again and take it back from co-empire and truly become a king that it deserves. And I definitely felt as though it was more so along the lines of like morale and this very gray line of what's right and what's wrong. So good chapter, not really big progression or anything. We didn't meet with the co-empire or we didn't meet with Ren or anything like that. But nonetheless, it was really just giving you an insight of what's going on truly with Balbad and the mask that they did, making the city beautiful, but stripping them of their identity and who they really are. At some given point, they might not even be called Balbad anymore. They might just be an extension of co-empire, co-empire five or something. I don't know. But overall, again, good chapter. First chapter, eight out of 10. This one, 7 out of 10. Combine it to both chapters together, 7.5 out of 10, whatever. I'm interested to see what's up at Kashim's grave, if there's anything at all. I hope it's not just like, yeah, there's some flowers there. I hope there's some interesting interaction, especially with the root that might be in Alibaba. But yeah, that's what my thoughts on this one. I'm really excited. I don't know, Magi uh, Manga is building up right now. It's on a slow buildup, but I know it's going to get crazy very soon. So good shit there. But that's all I have for this review. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up if you can't wait to see what the hell is going to happen with Kashim's grave and when he finally meets up. And also, what do you guys think is going to Gonna happen? Do you think Alibaba is gonna feel like he needs to wait a little bit? Do you think he's gonna ask for Sindria's help in taking back Balba? Let's just attack the co empire and take it over. What do you think is gonna be Alibaba's next move once he realizes, yo, I really need to change this country? I need to be the king. I need to do it. And will Alibaba ever finally tap some ass so people can stop making fun of the motherfucker? Let me know in the comment section below and your overall thoughts of this chapter. I'm for Neverworld, and as always, people.
have an awesome day.